All right, folks, welcome back to AWS Simplified, the place where I teach you everything there is to know about AWS. And today's video is going to be on AWS step functions. And specifically, I'm going to show you how to integrate step functions using lambdas. So let's do a quick overview of what we're going to do today. So we're going to build out a transaction processor state machine. The theme of this application is going to be credit card transactions. Credit card transactions can come in two flavors. They're either a purchase or a refund. So our starting of input event is going to look something like this. So we're going to have a JSON object that corresponds to a event type. And the event type is going to be one of either a purchase or a refund. In this example here, I'm just showing you the purchase. From there, that's going to be fed into the input of the state machine. And one of the first decisions is going to be a choice task. So we're going to have a process transaction choice where we need to make a decision on which direction in the state machine we want to go. So depending on the input type, so in this case, we have a purchase, we want to go in the left direction. So we want to go in the left here towards the purchase processor. And conversely, if the input is a refund type, then we want to go in the right direction. And that's going to be pointing it towards the refund processor. So both of these processors are going to be backed by two independent Lambda functions. And right? so we have the Lambda functions that are going to be responsible for parsing the input. From there, we're going to process the input and return the results back from the Lambda function into the state machine. And that's just going to be the terminal state of our state machine. So let's head over to the console and learn about how to set this thing up. All right, folks, here we are in the AWS console. So I'm going to start this out by going to create our two Lambda functions. So let's head over to Lambda and do that now. And you can click on create function. We're going to do this from scratch. This guy is going to be called process purchase. And as a reminder, we're going to have two functions. One is going to be called process purchase and the other one is going to be called process refund. And we're going to be using Python 3.6. And we just need a very basic role here. So we can just leave the default option, uh, create a new role with basic Lambda permissions. And we're going to click on create. This usually takes a minute or so. So I'll come back once it's all done. All right, folks. So after a few moments, the Lambda function was successfully created. So let's set everything up. So the first thing we need to do is actually write our code and paste it in here. So I'm going to go to Sublime Text to actually do that. Uh, so in this function, we have a process purchase function, takes a message and context. The message is going to be the basically the JSON object that corresponds to the input that's fed into the uh, step function. And as a reminder from the overview slide in the beginning, the input event is going to look like this. We're going to have a key that says transaction type and a value that's purchase. So the processing basically is three main steps. First one, just for debugging purposes, is basically just log the input message so we can see what we're actually dealing with. So let's just say received message from step functions and print out the message. Second is construct a response object. And we're just going to call this response. And we are going to set the key transaction type to be the basically the input that was passed into us. So I'm going to set the value to whatever the value of the input was. So we need to say message transaction type. And then let's set some more fields here just to prove that the processing is actually coming from Lambda. So timestamp. And we're going to be using date time, dates time dot now. And then we want to do some processing on the daytime object. So we want it in year, month, day, and then hour, minute, second. Okay, that looks good. And let's just set another cute little message here. Cute little property, rather. And let's just say hello from Lambda land inside the process purchase function. And the last step is basically just return the object. All right, so that looks good. So let's just take all that, come over to Lambda, dump it in. One thing you need to make sure to do is to change the handler name. 
So we need to change the handler name to the name of our handler function. Paste that there. All right, save. Uh, everything else here, all the options here, don't touch them. Everything is fine by default. You don't need to touch it. Uh, so that about wraps it up for the process purchase function. I'm going to go ahead and create a identical copy of this, except I'm going to call it the process refund function. So I'm going to come back once that's all set up. All right, folks, here we are back at the main section of the console. So you can see here that I created two functions now. So we have the process purchase and process refund. For all intensive purposes, these things are exactly identical. Um, you may be asking yourself, why do you have two Lambda functions? Why can't you just use one Lambda function? You totally could. This is just an example for this demonstration. So before we head over to IAM, we actually need to create a role for this, uh, for the step functions to use. Let's just go ahead and grab the ARNs of the Lambda functions because we're going to need it in one of the next steps. So you can see here after I click into the Lambda function up at the top right, here's the ARN. I'm just going to copy that, bring it over here, paste that there. I'm going to go back to the refund processor and do the exact same thing. And the reason we need this is because once we specify the step function, we need to actually give it a target of which Lambda function we are pointing it at. Uh, so we need the ARN in order to do that. So now I have those two uh, ARNs put aside. Let's head over to IAM where I actually need to create a role so step functions can invoke our Lambda functions. So I'm heading over to IAM, I'm going to go to roles, I'm going to click on create role. And there is a default policy or default role here that we can use. Yep. So if you look over here, there's step functions. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to permissions. And you can see here by default, it has a Lambda role that's associated with it. So if we expand this out, we can see what it actually is giving us um, as JSON, please. And then you can see that it's just basically giving your step functions the ability to invoke your function. So as a reminder, by default, and at least in the example we're using, um, the Lambda is going to be invoked synchronously from the step functions perspective. Okay. Uh, nothing else needs to be touched here. You can leave this as default. I'm going to click next. I'm not going to be touching tags. That's fine. Create role. We're going to say step function Lambda role. And I'm going to click on create. Okay, awesome. So here's our Lambda role. So now we can actually go finally and create our state machine. So let's go to step functions. Okay, and we're going to click on get started. And Ah, okay, so here's the default screen that I was looking for. That last one kind of threw me off. I think it, it thought that it was the first time we were creating a function, so it decided to put us through the wizard. Uh, so we're just going to click on Create State Machine, and we're going to call this the Transaction Processor States Machine. This is the default view that you get when you're defining your step function. So step functions are written in, it actually says it right up here, so Amazon states language. It's a proprietary language that I believe is specific to Amazon. It's actually a little bit, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get used to it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and the neat thing is that as you're making changes here, you can refresh over here and the corresponding representation of your code will be shown in this kind of visual area. So I've actually prepared one of these in advance and I just want to walk you through what's actually happening. So let's actually look at this in Sublime and then we'll paste it over and take a look at what's actually happening. So what we're basically saying here is we're, we have a start at section. So we're saying we want to start at this step, the process transaction step. And we have multiple states here. So we're starting at the process transaction and the type of state is a choice state. So we have multiple choices here. So we have an array that corresponds to two choices, one here and one here. And what we're basically saying is I want to make a choice on which direction to take in this Lambda function based on this variable. And this variable with this special, with this special syntax here with a dollar sign dot something basically corresponds to the input. So as a reminder, our input, it looks like this. So we have a JSON object and the key is the transaction type and the value is the value, whether or not it's a purchase or a refund. So what this is basically saying here is based on this variable, the transaction type, 
based on the actual value of that variable, I want to make a decision. So if the string is equal to purchase, then I want to go to this step. And purchase process purchase corresponds to this state down here. Okay. And similarly, we have the opposite side of that choice. So if the string equals refund, then we want to point it to the process refund step. And if we look down here of what these are actually doing, we can see that it's a task and this is the resource that it's pointing it to. So the resource in this case is a Lambda function. And this is where we're going to paste in our ARNs that we gathered from the previous step. And we can see here that this is a terminal state. So once this is processed, processed successfully, we are done. And basically the process purchase is pretty much an, a clone of the process refund. Okay, so let's take this and paste it over here. And by the way, I'm gonna be making this code and the Lambda function code that I wrote in the previous step available on the description section of this video. And if we just click on refresh after we've pasted it in, we can see kind of a good represent, a visual representation of what our state machine is going to do. So at the start, it's going to go to this decision task. And then based on the input, remember the input is going to be either refund or purchase. It's going to make a decision to either go left or go right. And once it processes either of those choices, it will be done. It'll be in its terminal state. So one thing that you can see here is we have this red dotted line. It's indicating to us that we need to give it a valid ARN, which is fine because we just did that in the previous step. So for the process purchase, let's take that. Process purchase, process purchase is down here. So that's the ARN, cool. And process refund. So let's take that and put that here. Okay. That looks good. Just a quick little refresh, refresh, make sure everything's good. Looks good. Um, no other options. We need to actually give it the role, which I believe is, yeah, so it's in this next step. So luckily we created the role that we already need. So we just, just can select choose an existing IAM role. And then I guess it's just defaulting. So it knows that we just created one recently. So it's giving us the IAM role. So we're going to use that. And then we're going to click on create state machine. Okay, awesome. So our state machine is actually created now. So we can actually run a instance of this step function. So let's go to start execution. And you can give it a random UUID or whatever ID you want here. And I'm just going to adhere to what I said in the previous step of what the input's going to look like. It's going to look like, oops. random so transaction type is purchase and then we're going to click on start execution so you can see here it's kind of giving you a view of what is the lambda or what the state machine is actually doing so the blue corresponds to what the next step is and you can see that after it was successfully processed it turned green so part of the cool part about the step functions is that you can actually see what it was doing and this is a real-time update of when this stuff is actually being processed so if you have a use case where you know something is stuck at a certain state or you're trying to to figure out, for instance, where a credit card transaction is at its life cycle in this step function. Um, step functions by default kind of give you a good visual cue as to what's happening. So if we kind of look at this a little more, we can see, okay, we took this, this route, we started at process transaction. Based on the event type, we branched off to the process purchase step, and then we came to the terminal step. So let's, let's click on process transaction and we can see some of the input and the output that came out of it. Click on input. I can see what was given to it as the transaction type and then click on output. Well, it was just kind of forwarding that message down. Uh, there was no exception, so that's good. And then if we click on process purchase, so this is where that timestamp and where that custom message that I defined in the Lambda function should show itself. So we can see something similar. So we see that this was the Lambda function that it invoked. We can see the input that was handed to it and the output. And there it is. So there's the output from the Lambda function. We're giving it back what the transaction type was. We set up the timestamp and this is exactly what came out of it. And then here's the cutesy little message that I um, kind of prepared. So let's just do that real quick again for um, the refund, just to show you how it kind of 
takes this path instead. Go to new execution. Um, set this to random too. And refund. Click on start execution. You can see we took this left branch already. And in a moment or so, we should see that it processed successfully and have a similar output to what we saw in the previous. So there we go, process refund. Input was refund, perfect. Output was exactly what we expected. So that about wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any topics you'd like me to cover, drop me a message in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Look forward to next video where I'll be doing a high-level overview of step functions and some of their capabilities. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.